Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got another Madden 22 preview video for you guys today. I said in a previous video that I've been, been uh, playing the game for like two weeks now. I've been a part of the uh, the June playtest community. Uh, I've been playing on Xbox One, and I got to be honest with you, I'm going to give my, my impression straight off the top. I absolutely love Madden 22. I think this game is super fun. Today's video, I'm going to uh, try to focus some of the uh, big changes when it comes to gameplay. I already put out a video focusing on some of the big changes when it came to CFM and stuff like that. I'll try to put a link in the description if you didn't catch that. But ultimately today I want to focus on gameplay. I really think this game is a lot more fun and exciting and more engaging. That's the big word that I think would be the most appropriate. It is because of some of the new gameplay changes like the momentum system and like uh, home field advantage and stuff like that. The game planning features uh, that you get to utilize. All this stuff really adds a lot of new wrinkles that just really make you live more in the moment when you're playing this game. I think this game is super fun. I'm super excited for the upcoming season. I can't wait to have this game and be able to show you guys uh, gameplay footage and, and get back to doing my, my normal gameplay videos and stuff like that because I really think that this game has a lot of new wrinkles to offer. Uh, but ultimately, when I want to compare it as far as gameplay wise, I don't want to act like EA reinvented the wheel here. This game feels like an updated, much more polished version of Madden 21. That's typically how they do that. It's, hard, it's impossible to think that EA comes out with a brand new game from scratch every year. It just doesn't work that way. A lot of times, it's really just an updated version or a more polished version from the previous year. But I really feel like, I don't know if my expectations were so low because last year's uh, Madden 21, especially when it came out on Next Gen, was really, it just really felt rushed and, and it wasn't done and it just had a ton of issues. A lot of those issues have already been pretty much cleared up. Uh, some of my biggest issues in Madden 21, other than like simple things like, you know, the play card art not showing up and stuff like that, which really seems inexcusable when it comes to, uh, you know, such it's, it seems like such a simple thing like it's still an issue in Madden 22 where sometimes when the the game starts and you see your your opponent's first three cards there's nothing there it's just three blank cards something like that you know it's a little off-putting but I'm more concerned with the gameplay itself I don't really care if I can see my opponent's cards as much as I am uh, that my players can run routes properly or turn on a dime or you know things like that were really kind of jarring like sometimes receivers would run routes and they would just like kind of warp out of place into like a different frame or something and it's just like wow this game is, is just really not polished um, it feels a lot better this year so if people were playing Madden 21 last year on next gen and they were underwhelmed or disappointed I really feel like they did a really good job of fixing that one position in particular though I feel like they really need to still kind of work on is the tight end position the tight end position early on in the beta especially felt like the linebacker position last year where it just felt unusable things like they couldn't catch the ball and turn up field at all uh, running backs really still don't feel like they can do that kick returners still feel really slow things like that um, but it's you know receivers are the only position that really feels like they have a little athleticism uh, which means to me that this is probably gonna be a little bit more of a pass heavy game but ultimately they really got to fix the tight end position because I you know I played a lot of mutt you get a 92 overall team when you play Mutt, so it's like everybody pretty much has the same team. I had George Kittle, and I just it just stood out so much that he just had no athleticism at all. He should be one of the most athletic tight ends in the game, but he really just he just didn't have the ability to catch and turn up. It just felt wasted to throw the ball to him in like the flat or something, or just really in any situation, to be honest with you. But towards the end of the beta, it felt like they got a little bit better, or maybe I just got used to it. But that's something definitely to watch out for. If you don't have a guy like a Darren Waller, who's essentially a receiver playing tight end, or somebody maybe like an Evan Ingram or something. There's only so many elite speed tight ends that feel like they're going to be worthwhile having or utilizing in this game. And it's just a shame that when you see positions like that really go by the wayside in a game kind of like linebacker did last year. Uh, because guys like Travis Kelsey and stuff like that, I mean, they pretty much play receiver as it is. They don't really play tight end. They play uh, a position where they're pretty much split out wide most of the time and they're very effective in the NFL. I mean, he might be, he might be a top five receiver in the league. Now, I want to talk about the interface. Um, it really feels like you know, like I said, this is not very different from Madden 21. It looks like they just slapped a fresh coat of paint on it. Uh, but the graphics are pretty cool. I mean, it looks mostly the same. I don't I don't expect too much as far of a difference as the graphics. Now, there's, there was also some seriously buggy issues in the game while playing. But I noticed they got less and less, um, you know, they happened less and less as the game went on. So I guess they probably got what they wanted out of the beta as far as, like, cleaning that stuff up. Uh, but I had some really weird ones where I would catch the ball, run, make a couple people miss, then fall and then it would be deemed an incomplete pass and it's just like you know things like that when they happen 
that were so clearly different from actual NFL rules can really take away from the immersiveness of the game, which is really what they want. They want they want immersion. And I really think that they knocked that out the park with some of the new gameplay features that I'm going to talk about next. Gameplay features that I think are really going to be key to the fun and excitement in this game are things like the momentum system and the uh, you know what can happen in the fourth quarter and what the the way the game is affected by being a, a road team or a home team. Those things really added a lot of new challenges that, like I said, really upped my engagement in the game because it wasn't as simple as I could just do the things I always want to do uh, because these things kind of got in the way. The momentum system especially. If you guys don't know, when it comes to the momentum system, it's similar to like the objective system when you play like, you know, franchise mode. Uh, but ultimately, I, I don't really remember them showing anything specific that you had to do to activate the momentum. I mean, I really feel like it could be as simple as just going up a score or two and just burying somebody, but I don't remember seeing anything like a specific objective you had to do to unlock these momentum traits that really helped your team when it came to winning games. But at any point in time in the game, you can hit the right trigger button and bring up the momentum legend to see which actual momentum tiers are activated or not. Uh, some of them, like I said, there was a lot that are, are, are stadium based, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, I think every home stadium has one, but it really, you know, you, I, I don't know a lot of them. I know that with Denver, it's a fatigue issue. Everybody knows Mile High Stadium um, is known for its its ability to fatigue uh, players that don't play on that team. They're not used to it because of the thin air in, uh, in Denver. Uh, I think that Seattle had something where the play art was just really wonky and it looked like uh, the quarterback was on acid or something. Uh, I think that was specific to, um, to Seattle. The Eagles, I played at Eagles Stadium once and I swore that icing the kicker was always on when it was activated which is really tough a lot of people don't like icing the kicker I mean, you know don't quote me on some of these these are just some things that i remember i know i took a screenshot that i'm, I'm actually reading off of right now from tampa bay i can't show graphics from the game but tampa bay had a, uh, a thing called fire the cannons where the home team recovers fatigue upon entering the red zone so it's like there's a lot of really cool twists and turns based off of what team you choose i don't know if any of them would be big enough that you might choose a specific team based off of a momentum uh, item but it's really you know like i said that's really unique and it really adds a new layer a new dimension of like i said immersion into the game and it just makes every game unique and uh you know just different which is really cool now in that same game that i'm talking about there is really um two two more uh you know ledge or momentum items that are basically the same on both teams nerves unstoppable they seem to be the ones that i ran into the most uh nerves was basically um you know at times uh if if you would pull up your pre-play art and want to you know set up a play however you want to set up a play a lot of times your receiver icons were missing pre-snap and i think at times they were missing post snap too but i i think that was happened to me once or twice like in the fourth quarter so that might have been something that was part of um the late game momentum system that really makes it uh, a little bit harder to come back in a game or something like that um, which i once again i thought was really cool even though it was a, it was a pain to deal with it was still a really neat uh thing to add and it just made the game like i said just made the game a little more challenging and a little more gauging and a little bit more fun but when you have something like that in effect where your receiver icons are just like i said they're just like question marks and sometimes i would have like two receivers that have question marks and only two receivers that i could actually see the icons pre-snapped before they run the pattern that really makes it difficult even if you know what your opponent's running to try to set up an appropriate offensive play because the route that you might need to alter might be the route that it's not letting you alter based off of the fact that like I said, it's it's the momentum thing is activated and you can't uh, actually change that receiver to the route you want to run. So things like that, like I said, I just thought it was really cool. It was different. It was new. It was inventive. And I got to give EA a lot of credit for, for some of these things. I mean, they're really pushing the envelope this year. They also had a lot of ones that dealt with um, things like, you know, fatigue and um, maybe uh, things that one of the ones I noticed the most was receivers dropping balls when the momentum was activated. Things like this can can I get they, at some time they probably would be frustrating. But like I said, I mean, it really just change. It might just change how you approach the game. I mean, if you know that that's activated, you might have to switch up and become more of a runner until you can get back into the game and stuff like that. And it's just, you know, that function, that challenge to me was, was just really cool. It can dictate the pace of the game. It can dictate how your opponent plays. Another thing that is going to dictate that is the the pre or the uh, the pregame planning, which if you play a game of regs, whether you're playing CFM or regs, and CFM, it seems like something you can do throughout the week. 
week, if you ha just hop into a game of regs, you still have to select, um, you know, some uh, things that you want your offense and your defense to focus on. So pretty much every game you have a choice on offense and defense going into a game, even though in a game of regs, you obviously have no idea what your opponent likes to do, whether he likes to run inside or outside, which is going to be options, whether they like to sh throw short, medium, or intermediate, they call it, or deep, which are all options that you can select when it comes to defense, or whether they're a scrambler. This will come more in handy, I think, in uh, obviously when you're playing on uh, CFM. Uh, because in, in, in regs, it was almost like you're guessing. I mean, you don't even know what a, what team you're playing against. So obviously, if you're playing against a team like uh, the Ravens or something, you probably want to go with the uh, advanced ability to stop somebody who scrambles on defense compared to if you're just going into a regular game. I really felt like the best way to go was to choose either the blitz package or the deep pass, uh, which are things that you never want to give up or you always want to be better at. You always want to get more pressure. Uh, you always want to uh, be able to defend the deep pass better because obviously, Obviously, you don't want to give up deep touchdowns. So there were ones that I think were probably better by default. But ultimately, like I said, it's really going to be more helpful in CFM. Uh, but in regs, I mean, the, the, one of the main things you have to know about this system, too, is it's not all positive. There's a negative to every one of them. Some of them you get more traits than others. Like I said, with deep pass, it really seems like you got three positives and only one negative so it's like that sounds like something that would be better to do compared to something like inside run or outside run where it was just a straight positive and a straight negative if you pick to defend inside run better you're obviously going to get beat on blocks outside more you know what i mean it's really that it's really that simple when it comes to something like that so it, it didn't really make sense to me to use that when you could use something like um you know deep we you know the deep passing which i used the most where you would basically get slower defender reactions on the receivers you would get uh, increased deep route running which obviously is important better spectacular catch all that stuff would be better the only real negative was your your intermediate route running would be worse so it's like of course you want to go with something like that if you're getting that much more positivity plus it's also based off of how you play the game i know me personally i'm always trying to throw the ball deep for the most part so that obviously is more important to me so i do think that there's a good chance that those two specific categories could probably be the meta setup uh either deep pass or blitz or whatever but ultimately um you know it's just a really cool wrinkle to throw into the game that you can try to improve that before the game. I don't think you can really change that till halftime, which is something that might, you know, some people might have an issue with. Um, you know, because if you choose wrong, obviously it can be a problem for you until you get the opportunity to change it. But it's definitely a cool feature. Like I said, those are some of the coolest features. It really made playing regs more fun. I really felt like because this particular feature wasn't in MUD. So part of me felt like, um, you know, that, that really might draw me away from MUD more because that was a really fun feature to have. Uh, but ultimately, you know, it, it felt like the more polished version of the game was the the regs gameplay. The the mutt gameplay felt worse than the regs gameplay, which I think a lot of people would be happy about because a lot of people buy the game for regs or for CFM. It really feels like they put a way more attention into that than they did mutt this year, uh, which is is which is interesting. Hopefully, I mean, I'm more of a mutt player and this is more of a mutt channel, so hopefully that won't be the case all the way through. But if you are one of those players that was upset last year because they didn't put a lot of time or focus or attention into CFM or regs, you're going to feel way differently about it this year. It feels like they built this experience around regs and CFM and then adapted mutt to the formula and there's still it still feels like they're doing that so like I said to me that should really make a lot of people happy that buy this game for those game modes and that were upset in previous years that they put more attention into mutt uh, it feels like the exact opposite this year it feels like they really put more attention into uh, to CFM and regs gameplay first so I'm gonna go ahead and end the video there like I said if you had a chance to play this game and you feel differently let me know in the comment section uh, what your experience was other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.